Hey, we're, we're going to get started. How's everybody's DrupalCon going? Yeah, all right. <clears throat> I know it's late in the afternoon. You guys are a little tired. That's all right. I'm going to start off with a couple of questions. How many people are doing translation right now in, in Drupal? In Drupal. All right, okay. Uh, how many people need to do translation? That's why you're here, kind of trying to figure it out. All right. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> next question, Drupal 7 versus Drupal 8. Who's using Drupal 7? All right. Who's looking at doing Drupal 8? All right, awesome. So you guys are in the right spot. Uh, first of all, let's start off with who I am. My name is John Picozzi. I'm the senior Drupal architect at Umfink, which is a, a full-service web agency in Providence, Rhode Island. We help companies with digital strategy, user experience design, and Drupal and WordPress implementations. <laughs> Some of our clients include Blue Cross Blue Shield, Brown University, Uyala, and Leica Geosystems, which is actually a translation client. A lot of our uh, work revolves around complex implementations, system integrations, commerce, multilingual, and accessibility. A little bit about me. I'm a co-organizer of the New England Drupal Camp. I'm a co-podcaster on the Talking Drupal podcast. And I'm a co-organizer of the Drupal Providence Meetup. Nate's the other organizer. He's in the front row. So that's enough about me. Let's move on to what everybody came here to see, right? What are we doing today? Well. The idea is we're going to do a live demo. I know, crazy, but we're going to do it. And we're going to be building a Drupal 8 site with translation. First, I'm going to start off with core translation so you can see what you kind of get out of the box. And then we're going to add Lingotech for basic machine translation. In order to do this in a relatively safe manner, uh, we're going to be using a local environment built with Composer with Vagrant and VirtualBox running Drupal VM and Drupal 8.5. We're going to be using a couple of modules. The Lingotech module, which is required for this exercise, so we can connect to their service. And then a couple of helper modules, the coffee module and the admin toolbar module. If you're not using either of those modules, I recommend you go out and use them. They will make your life a lot easier. I've distilled all the links and all the kind of helpful information uh, down uh, on our, my site. So if you go to that link, you will get um, some commands you can run to get your local set up and uh, some helpful links of uh, some of the things that I'm, I'm doing here today. So feel free to uh, check that out. You can do it now if you're trying to follow along or later on. I figured I would start off with a quote. Um, you know, when you say, hey, I'm going to go to DrupalCon and I'm going to do a live demo, people say, you know, you're foolish, you're crazy, you're out of your mind. Um, well, everybody in this room is here because they're hungry for knowledge, right? So I thought the late, great Steve Jobs was perfect here where he says, stay hungry, you came to learn. And, uh, well, I'm foolish because I'm going to try to do a live demo in front of a room full of people. So without further ado, let's jump into the live demo. I actually have two more slides here because the install process for Drupal VM kind of took a long time. Last time I gave this talk at the Nerd Summit in uh, Western Massachusetts, uh, I got some feedback that like, hey, shorten up the install to Drupal. Like, you guys can learn about that. Go to the Drupal VM site. There's great documentation on how to install Drupal. So I have two more slides here, one of which is the Git clone of downloading uh, Drupal VM to your local, your local system. Literally. You git clone into your project folder, and then you run a vagrant up. And I had an animated GIF here originally, and I know Nate's sad about this, but I had to take it out because it was like a five minute long animated GIF, and Google Slides just kept, kept not wanting to show it. So it'll run through, it'll take you know about five minutes, and by the end of that, you will have a fully functional Drupal site. So something that looks like this. 
So we've already logged in. If you wanted to see a logged out view, I have it open here. And this is Drupal VM running on my, my local computer. So fully functional, ready to go. So first things first. We're gonna download some of those additional modules I talked about. Now, this is a little bit of a high risk exercise because I am going to use the conference Wi-Fi. So if you're on the Wi-Fi right now and you wanna shut that device off, that would really be helpful. Here we go. So you'll see I'm using Composer to do this, Composer Require. I've stacked up Lingotech, Admin Toolbar, and the Coffee Module. While this is running, haha, it's been cached. Um, while this is running, I'm actually gonna go put some content into my website. Now, this is pretty basic. I'm not doing anything overly special here other than building out content as I normally would in Drupal. And I know Nate wanted to automate this so that way you guys didn't have to watch me put content in, but I wanna show you guys how easy it is to enter content into Drupal. So we're gonna call this the homepage. And we're gonna put in our menu. Actually, you know what, we don't need a menu item for that. So we'll save this. We have a homepage, amazing, right? Let's add two more pages here. So that way we have some good content for us to uh, round trip from uh, Lingotech when the time comes. So we're gonna do about me. to our menu. Doo, 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 doo. Should I have like Jeopardy music? Would have been helpful. And we're gonna have one more. We're gonna save this. We'll notice that our menu is kinda of out of order, so let's re restructure that a little bit. All right, and if we go back to our site, that looks pretty good. Last thing we wanna do is just update the configuration for the homepage. So now we have our site and we're ready to start translating content. I go to homepage, I get my nice homepage, that looks great. Let's check the site out, not logged in. Everything looks pretty good. So let's go and check to see if our module's finished. Hey, look at that, it actually worked, awesome. Let's enable those modules. <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do again is I'm going to leave Lingotech off for right now so we can see what core uh, can do on its own. And then we'll add Lingotech later and show you what that does. So first things first, we're gonna do coffee. How many, how many people are using coffee? Oh man, okay, so it's like spotlight search for your Drupal site. I recommend checking it out. How many people use an admin toolbar? Oh man, guys, you gotta, you gotta use some admin toolbar. It's amazing. It will uh, basically create dropdowns so you can get to things faster. So let me install those two things. Three modules installed, awesome. And I'm actually gonna just flush cache because what's gonna end up happening is sometimes admin toolbar doesn't, doesn't activate right away unless you flush the cache. So I'm just gonna clear out that. And now you'll see I have drop downs. That's admin toolbar right there. So let's go into enabling translation modules. So if I type in translation, you'll see that there are uh, three modules that I need, one of which is the Lingotech module. That's a fourth, our fourth module on the, uh, on the page here. So I'm gonna install all three of these modules because they're, they're gonna be needed for me to um, translate 
our site. Configuration translation, content translation, and interface translation. We're gonna talk a little bit about content translation and interface translation. The way that Drupal's kind of broken down translation in Drupal 8 is that uh, content translation, you can translate all of your content. So anything the user can see as content, it can be, can be translated. You can also translate the interface, which is essentially the admin. The, the trick here that I've found over working with quite a few uh, translation sites is that sometimes there are things that the user can see that on the front end that are actually interface. Um, an example of this is certain things in views. Um, uh, certain, certain menu items sometimes are considered interface. So typically I enable both of these both of these uh, uh, options when I'm translating a site, but you may not need to, depending on how advanced your site is or what you're, what you're trying to achieve. So let's go through this process. And then, of course, you're gonna have to figure, translate that stuff as well. Yep, we're gonna hit continue. We need the language module, that is important. So it enabled our four modules, content translation, configuration translation, interface translation, and language. You'll now notice, if you look in the configuration menu, and you go down to region and language, you have an uh, uh, area here for uh, adding different languages to your site. So we're gonna jump in here right away so we can see what we got in here. So you can see that the site by default is in English. Um, we're gonna add a language because we can't really translate anything without a language, right? So uh, somebody give me a language. French. Somebody said French. French? French. We're going with French. So pro tip, any front end developers in the room? Couple? Cool. Usually we test our front end designs with German because when you translate something into German it tends to get like a lot bigger. So you can see if there's, there's breakage gonna happen in your theme. So keep that in mind. I'm actually glad this gentleman didn't say German because, I mean, core, core handles it very well, but. So you'll notice now that you've enabled translation, every time you enable a module, you're gonna go through this process. And basically what this is doing is this is taking any translation that's, within, that's been built into that module and adding it to Drupal core so that way the module can be, can be translated. So you'll see that French has been enabled. We have it here. You'll notice that 99.94% uh, of the interface is translated. Um, so that's Drupal admin. And you'll actually notice as we start going through the site, sometimes you'll see that, if depending on what page you're on, whether the English version or the French version, you'll see that um, some of the admin items are in, are in French. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So, one thing we do want to uh, review is the detection and selection settings. So Drupal has quite a few options here when it comes to um, how we want to set this up as far as how is Drupal going to know what language the site should be. So you have these options. You can do it via the URL. You can do it via the session. You can do it through uh, user, uh, browser and then the selected language. So you can add a language selector to the site, user can select it. Uh, typically we like to go with a URL for content and for interface, so you'll see this says interface. For interface we like to go with um, the administration language. and then the URL. So like on your admin account, once you enable this, you'll be able to actually set your preferred language. Um, I have run into some bugs with this, where as I said, you'll go to the French version of the site, and the next thing you know, your menu is in French. Uh, so we'll, we'll, I'll point that out when, when that happens. As you come down here, you'll see content language detection. Content language detection mirrors whatever you set in interface language detection, unless you hit this button here. And basically that allows you to set a different, uh, different option. Here you'll see that it says, hey, use the interface settings. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna use the URL for this exercise. It's a little bit easier because you can see right in the URL, like, hey, I'm on the French site, I should be seeing French here. 
So we're going to save those. So at this point, you're almost ready to start translating content. And what I mean by that is there's still a few more steps that we have to do in relation to um, our content type and uh, enabling that for, for translation. So if we go back into the regional menu, we'll see that there are some menu items here for content language and translation. If we click here, uh, you'll see that there's a list here of um, different entity types. Now, the folks using Drupal 7 uh, will notice that this in Drupal 8 is way easier than in Drupal 7. I, I apologize, but um, from this screen, you can actually enable translation for every piece of content on your site, as opposed to in Drupal 7 having to go through each piece of content and enabling each field, which is super time consuming. So this is way better, way better. So we're only gonna translate two types of content. We're gonna translate our content and then our custom menu links. And you'll see that as I'm checking these boxes, things are opening up down below here. And this is basically what I was talking about. From here, I can start saying, oh, I wanna do taxonomy, I wanna do users, and I can basically select every single field within the site that I wanna translate. It makes it really easy. Uh, you know, the team that worked on uh, translation in Drupal 8 did an awesome job. Uh, my first Drupal site was a Drupal 7 site. And coming to Drupal 8, it was, it was like revolutionary for me. It was awesome. So we're just gonna do basic pages right now. And I'm gonna shut off some fields because we don't need to translate everything. I'm gonna translate our title. And you can do URL aliases if you want to. For this exercise, we're not going to, but. Um, and the body. So that's what I'm gonna do for that. And then for custom menu links, I'm really just gonna do the menu link title. So we're gonna save this. It's gonna work on it. It's working. And we'll see that it's saved. If we go into our content type now, or our content rather, and we'll do our home page because that has less content. We'll see a translate tab at the top now. <laughs> we click on there. We have the ability to add our French translation. Pretty easy, right? It's been um, 17 minutes and we already can translate content on a Drupal site. That's awesome. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna treat, treat, uh, cheat here because I don't actually know French. And I'm gonna use Google Translate. Oh, you can see that it reloaded my old, my old session. And we're gonna go with French. All right. Apparently, oh, wait a second. There we go. I'm like, that looks like English to me. All right, so let's copy that. And going back to here. So you'll notice here that if you look at the URL, you'll see that it says slash fr slash node slash one. That's how we know that, hey, we're editing the French version of this page. You'll, it'll also go into say translation add en fr. So you know in those two places, if you see in the fr, you know, hey, this is gonna be the French version. So let's drop that here and let's translate home. And you'll actually notice, as I'm looking at this, you'll notice that the admin is uh, in French. You'll see title here, publishing, right? As soon as I save this page, we'll, we'll attempt to fix that. Let me just translate the home. Anybody here actually speak French? A little bit? How's Google doing? Good, doing, doing so-so, all right. So I will say that, that Google Translate is, is okay, but um, having an actual, actual person translate it and then an actual person in France read it and, and make sure that it's contextually appropriate is, is a huge plus. So let's go down here and hit what I imagine to be the save and publish button. You'll see that this content is now in French. So if we go to our logged out version, we go home, Hey, it's still in English. Let me place the language selection block so that way, you know, let me actually fix my uh, admin so that way I can actually, uh, I, can't, I can't read French. 
Let's go back to English. Do, 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 do. No, I'm not going to do it. I don't like people. So here's the setting that I was referring to. If I come down here, there should be a administration pages language. I'm going to say English. And because I said no, had no preference there before, it was just loading whatever the site was in. Now if I save this, still a little bit buggy from time to time, but I should be able to see my pages in uh, English when I'm, when I'm editing them now. The other thing I want to do is I want to enable the uh, language switcher block so we can see how that works. So I'm going to go to my, one of my sidebars. Let's go with my first one. And I'm going to set my language switcher. Now you'll notice here there are two. There's a language switcher for the content and a language switcher for the interface. Because we want all of our content in a different language, we are going to place the block for content. And um, I'm just going to call it language switcher. I don't need to know which one. And you can actually, uh, for block configuration now, you have the ability to say, hey, I want this block to only appear on the French page, or I want it to appear on the English page. So the fact that you've enabled translation kind of unlocks a lot of customization that you can make within Drupal to very carefully focus your content to one language or the other. So we're going to save this. And I'm just going to double save this page, make sure it does what we need it to do. Go back to the logged out version. Do I have a language switcher? I do. And if I go to French, hey, look at that. And you know, Google tries to help me out. I appreciate that. This is in French. The menu title is in French. Now, I will tell you, you guys didn't see me edit the menu title, did you? That's actually core. Because that home button is a core button that was installed when Drupal was installed, that's coming out of core right now. That's part of the 99.94% that was translated when we translated, we added the interface. So we'll talk about translating menus when we get into, uh, get into Lingotech, but it's the same process. Let me, let me show you that really quickly now. Come into main navigation, say I wanted to translate about me, edit, translate, same deal. Just like editing content, super easy. All right. Now for the fun part. Say you have a page with a thousand pieces of content on it. Does anybody want to go through that? Translate each one, translate each menu item, translate blocks, views. This guy's like, no, nobody wants to do that. Um, well, neither do I. And Lingotech offers uh, a service that will help you to translate your content. So their free tier, which I'm going to show you today, will uh, basically translate your uh, content with uh, machine translation, which is using um, Microsoft Translate? Microsoft Translate. Um, so it works, it works great, um, but their full suite of services allows you to, uh, ha allows you access to their TMS, their translation management system, which allows your translators to go in and translate content, their translators to go in and translate content, depending on who needs to do it. So it allows you to set up workflows, so that way you can say, hey, machine translate this, and then send it to a translator to actually have it translated, and then send it to somebody in the region to be able to read it, and you know, maybe one of your marketing officers is in, is in France, per se. And send it to them, let them review it, make sure it all makes sense, and then approve it and download it back to Drupal. This can be set up to automatically happen when you add new content or be more of a manual process. We say, oh, I entered 12 blog posts. I'm going to send them all up and they'll automatically come back down. So we're going to enable a module and go through kind of those, those steps. And then I think we'll probably have some pretty good time for Q&A. So if you have questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. So again, this is installing the module. There we go. All right. Pulled in some translation. You'll see it imported some translation files. It also added this cool little drop down to your menu. So this is the, uh, the Lingotech module at work here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to actually go into settings because I have to configure it. Now, 
you can create a new account. So uh, how many people here are Lingo Tech customers? Okay, nobody. Cool. So if you wanted to try this at home, you could go in, you could create a new account, and they would basically allow you to translate some of your content for, for free. Uh, we have an account, so I'm just going to use I'm going to use my account. But the process for creating an account super easy. Click the button, it sends you off to their site. You get your account information, then you can log in, be on your way. So I actually already logged in earlier, so I'm hoping it just grabs my cookie and logs me in. No, all right. So let's do this. Okay, here it goes. So it's working, it's working, it's working. Hey, there we go. So you'll see this is the Lingotech dashboard. Shows you some stats about your site, how much of it is, uh, or how complete the project is, meaning how much of your site is translated, basically. Um, it can show you how many languages you have enabled in Lingotech. Gives you some stats about um, kind of general language usage, and if you have two languages enabled, how many people you're, you, how much reach you have, and so on and so forth. So at this point, we're actually going to do some configuration for, um, for our site here. And if we go into config, you'll see that, uh, I'm actually sorry, we're gonna go into content. Oh, I did not enable content. So let's go over here. And you'll see now in settings, I have all of these, these options. Uh, I need to go through and enable my content for translation with Lingotech. Now, Keep in mind, I enabled my content for translation in Drupal. That's Drupal Core. The Drupal Core system talks to Lingotech, and then Lingotech says, hey, what content do you want to send up to, your, to Lingotech to be translated? So one of our clients actually has blog content, and they're like, oh, we have so many blogs. We do not need to have them all like professionally translated, or like we'd rather just not have them translated at all. They've created a workflow, that, or they, in the settings, they've actually disabled that piece of that content type from going up to Lingotech. So, you know, that's that's pretty powerful because if you're paying for translation and you don't, you know, you don't need a piece of content translated, you don't want to send it up. So let's go ahead and same sort of interface. The uh, we're gonna check this, set for automatic translation. We're gonna select the fields. Now you could do each field, you can do all the fields, same sort of interface that you're using with Drupal Core that you're familiar with. And we're gonna go through here and do this and this. We're gonna save that. All right, now if I go back to the content screen, we should see our content. Now, you'll notice FR has a gray box next to it. If I hover over the gray box, it's gonna tell me that a translation exists. Well, it does, because we already created it. We have the ability to kind of wipe out our Google translated uh, translation and use Lingotech, uh, Lingotech translation uh, in this case. So what we're gonna do is, I'm actually gonna send all this stuff up to be translated, check on it, and then have it come back down. We could do that one way by clicking uh, on the source, right? And it changes colors. So this interface will change colors as your content gets to different statuses within Lingotech. So let's do this for all of them. And you know what, I'll do this here. So if I hover over this, it'll say source importing. If I hover over here, it'll tell me that, hey, I've requested the translation. Oh, I just clicked again. Okay, so now you see that this one is green. That means the source has been uploaded to Lingotech. So it's up, it's up in the TMS, and they're cranking away on it. I'm gonna take the easy approach with these two and just use the bulk operation here. Uh, upload source translation, it's the first one. All right, so now, what happened? Well, yeah, okay. So we wanna check the progress of the translation. So I sent it up. I'm gonna check the progress on this. Hit execute. Do, do, do. It's good when you bring Lingotech to your talk because like you're up here and they can just be like, hey, do this. Okay, cool, thanks guys. 
So now you'll see that we have different translations. Translation's been requested, and because I did About Me a little bit differently, you'll see that it's actually ready for download. So let's get all of these in the same, in the same state here. I don't know, there's something very gratifying about just clicking these buttons and seeing them change color. And because we're only doing three, it's very easy. You know, if you were, if you were doing, again, a thousand, you wouldn't want to sit here clicking buttons all day. So now we have the ability to come in here. These are all the same status, and we're going to actually download our translation. So download all translations. And through the magic of the internet, everything's green. And green means go. So that means all of our translations have gone up to Lingotech, been translated, come back down. And if I go to my site, I'm going to do it logged out because it's a little bit, little bit easier. No Google, thank you though. You'll notice that our homepage is still translated, but that was already translated. If I go here, all of our content has been translated, right? There you go, all right. So I can click through here. I can see all of this is translated. Apparently the word oomph is still oomph in France. That's cool, I'm okay with that. What are you noticing here though? Obviously the home button, like I said, came out of the core translation, so it's already been translated. But about me and Drupal and oomph are not translated. We didn't actually send the menu items up to be translated, so if I come back into the Lingotech interface. I see I have custom menu links right at the top here. And I can go through the same process here. I can upload them, have them translated, download them, and they will appear. So let's go through that process quickly. I'm just gonna click the buttons again, it's so satisfying. I know there's some DevOps guy out there that's like, oh, you're creating extra load. But it's all right. It's always the last one. It takes the longest. I click too many buttons. DevOps guy got me. He's like, yeah, I got you. There we go, all right, so those are all done. Let's go back and take a look at, hey, look at that, everything's translated. Apparently there's no French word for Drupal either. That's awesome. All right, so we basically in, um, you know, 45 minutes or so, translated all of, our, all of our content, right? That's pretty impressive. At this point, I'm gonna show you two more slides and then I'm gonna open uh, everything up for questions. Let me pull those up. The DA has uh, asked me to remind you that you can go to the talk page and um, let them know what you thought of this talk. It was great, right? Right? No pressure. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, if you want to work on translation, you want to work on the Lingotech module, you want to work on anything, there are going to be sprints on uh, Friday. So make sure you check those out. I appreciate your time, and if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. That was really, really cool. Um, Thanks. I'm curious, does it allow for swapping out the main language? So uh, English was the main language here. Can I swap that and make it French so that the translate tab on the node form is now going to carry English? Yep, absolutely. So if I, let me go back to my demo right quick. Cool, thank you. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, oh, yeah, all right. So if I go into uh, under here for languages, you can see that there's a default option right here. Sweet. So I can just say, hey, I want French to be the default language. And that'll basically say, okay, that's the default language for the site. Anytime the site displays, it's gonna display in French. I assume that affects Lingotech's integration? Uh, yeah, so it assumes that the source language is now French. Sweet, that um, is phenomenal. 
So yeah, once once you change that, you can upload it in French, and they can they can translate it into English or any any language you want. Uh, thanks. Um, so one question, um, or two, I have two questions. First, uh, why is URL the recommended means of detecting the language? Is there um, some so to be fair, for this for this demo, URL was was easier. Uh, we have clients that um, prefer prefer the URL method, but you, I mean you can use a domain. Um, one of the options is to to use a domain uh, and you know have a fr dot your domain dot com if you want to. So, but language headers in the in the request or other things are not recommended broadly. Is that? Um, to be honest, uh, I've only ever used URLs and domains. Um, okay. You, you know, experiences may vary. I would okay. say go ahead and try it out. You saw how easy it was. Try it out with your use case, mm -hmm. and you know, see if you run into any issues. So then, second question: um, If you have done some translation in Drupal yep. um, and have that translated content uh, that gets sent to Lingotech, will that will then wipe out? your local translated version? It will, yep. Okay. So what's happening there, as you saw with my, my homepage, it wasn't very evident because I had already translated it, but Lingotech basically wiped that out and replaced it with uh, you know, what was in their system. Okay, thanks. So I got two things. Um, sure. The section you went over about uh, defaulting admin UI to English, I could not see. I was wondering if you could go over that real quick because I yeah. was looking in my menus. I couldn't find that. That's all right. So if you go under your, uh, I kind of did that quickly too. So if you go under people, go to your user account and scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that it says administration pages language. Okay. Um, did you not have that? <laughs> Maybe I just missed it. No. Nope. So is so, it, it's so a pre-user setting? That setting is actually contingent on you selecting this. So let me go back over here. And if you don't select account administration pages, uh, okay. it will not show up. Okay. So that's a, a per user setting? Uh, yep. Okay. Um, the second thing, I, I, I don't know if anyone else has uh, feedback about this, but in translation, you know, obviously you go through uh, different pieces of content, but another piece that I've just been curious about is URLs. Um, with Path Auto, you have the ability to use different field content to uh, create you know, auto-create aliases. Yep. Um, I'm curious if it's a best practice to translate URLs or if URL aliases should be more or less the same across languages. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak from experience, and I don't know if it's necessarily best practice. We had a client that um, did translate their URLs, and they did not have good results with it. They ended up going back to just using um, straight English URLs. So um, the URLs were the same everywhere. But uh, as you saw in um, the Drupal configuration as well as the Lingotech configuration, you do have the ability to send the alias up to be translated. So if you wanted to do um, you know, region specific URLs, you, you definitely could. Hi. Um, Hi. I got kind of a two question part. Sure. Uh, I saw that you're definitely using the WYSIWYG, CK Editor, stuff like that. We do have a lot of clients that like to embed uh, pictures with captions and stuff like sure. that. Uh, how good does Lingotech and the Quadruple translate, translate those captions and alt text? And stuff like that. It, it does a really good job. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that from the the Lingotech perspective, um, because uh, our client has had that same issue. You know, they've had a picture with a caption, needed to have the caption translated, not necessarily the picture. Um, so you through Lingotech, you can tell Lingotech what tags you want to be translated. So even if you had like a um, you know a title tag on a link or something like that, and you wanted the title tag to be translated, you can change your configuration within Drupal, um, within the Lingotech module in Drupal, to say, hey, on a tags, don't send the link, but send the title, and have that put into the TMS and have that translated. So it, it breaks it down really, really nicely for you to be able to uh, translate all of those pieces. Um, on the core side, uh, you can actually have different content per, per translation. So like if I decided that 
you know, I, I had an image that was specific to a, a US, US audience. And then I had a, another image that was uh, more specific to a um, French audience. I could actually change those and have two different images on each one. Uh, like I said, once you enable translation in core, um, Drupal becomes very flexible at uh, managing that content and saying like, hey, show this page to the French audience and show this page to the, to the English US audience. Okay. My other question is, um, we got our, a lot of our customers that are heavily into Panelizer, sure. custom blocks and paragraphs. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that as a optional list and I'm just wondering how well does the Lingo tech and all that play around with those. So uh, in the past, I've had really good, um, really good success with that. Um, that's actually under uh, the config options here. You'll see in here you have content and then you have config. Okay. Um, I also didn't enable block for translation um, in this demo. But yeah, it handles all that stuff. It'll do uh, blocks, views, basically anything that the Drupal translation system can get to, Lingo okay. tech can get to to translate. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Hey, Go ahead. how you doing? Good. Uh, so a couple questions. Sure. Um, if we have uh, multiple translated sites, is it possible to have some that use the URL, such as FR, and some that use the domain? Uh, okay, I gotta I gotta clarify that question a little bit. Yeah. Um, are they different Drupal in instances? Are no. they so they're all one Drupal instance, yeah. and you um, basically want to do it per language? Right. Um, yeah, you can do that. You can set. Um, pretty sure you can set detection configuration per language. Let me just double check that. Yeah, here you go. Okay. So on this screen here, you could say, okay, I want you know fr for my URL, or if you changed it. Um, it might be a little bit difficult, actually, now that I'm looking at this, the, to do different approaches. Okay. Um, you may have to do some sort of rewriting at the server level to kind of say like, hey, if you come in on right. this domain, go over to the path, or right. vice versa. Um, there are a couple of modules out there uh, that might be able to help with that. I know the domain module is something that we use. Um, I'm not sure how, if that would, um, that would help or hurt, but you could try it out. Okay, and um, is um, right to left, left to right supported? Oh yeah, uh, okay. out of the box. So right. um, I actually did a, a demo of this for our, our internal team and um, somebody picked a, a right to left language yeah. and it just it just worked. Everything shifted because uh, I was using a um, I was using a, you know the core Bartic yeah. theme and that's built to handle that. So everything right. just worked. Uh, one one final question. Um, sure. Does it add headers in um, meta tag information to the header so that uh, Google can can be on a page and know that there's a French version, Italian version? Yeah, you can um, you can set it up to to do that. Um, and there are. Um, integrations with meta tag and I think there's a href lang module out there too to kind of okay. handle that SEO right. stuff. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, my question was around, and this is something, a uh, use case that, that uh, I deal with quite a bit, which is I uh, want the interface to always be in English. Sure. But the content of the website themselves yep. to never be in English. Yep. And have French and Arabic, yep. right? Uh, but the interface is non-changeable. Yep. Um, could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, as you saw, I was able to set my admin interface at the user level to English and work in, you know, in English on uh, my French content. Um, I haven't actually played around with this in 8.5 yet, but I know in previous versions there were some patches that needed to be added to kind of make this a little bit um, more solid because there were instances where like your menu items would swap, and you'd, right. be, you'd get really um, you'd get really comfortable uh, quickly understanding whatever the other language was, because you'd be like, "Oh, that's extend." Okay, got it. Because when when you choose your default language, you're choosing your default interface language, right? Not the site default. So the default is um, is the the default for everything. I don't actually. No, I've never had an instance where I needed to set basically a default for the interface and a default for content. The site, yeah. Yeah, so um, that would be something that you'd definitely want to play around with and, and test out. But yeah. um, it, it works It works very well because we actually, one of our bigger clients that uses Lingotech and does translation, all of the people that are editing the site are English speakers. So they're all, they're editing French, Italian, German, um, 
in, in English. And my second question was just around um, the translation, uh, not automation, but the service, uh, and how that works with uh, moderation. Like, could you have you know, published English, send it up to be translated into French, but send it back as a draft? You know what? I'm, I'm going to punt that question uh, and say after we're done, you should talk to the Lingotech guys and see, see what they have to say because we've actually never had to do um, in that. We've never had that use case. We haven't had it yet. Okay. Short answer is yes. All right. The recording's happening. I had the same questions around interface, but cool. when you enabled the modules, you said that you had to turn on interface translations because it was a requirement for Lingotech. Have you ever just not turned on interface translation? Um, it's, not, it's not a requirement for Lingotech. Gotcha. Um, so I'm sorry if that was oh, not clear. Oh, that's okay. Um, no, uh, what it is, what, it ends up, what ends up happening is you, um, you notice certain, certain user-facing things that are yeah, actually yeah. interface, they're not content. Yeah. Um, and that happens a lot more in views, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. So I typically just enable interface because that gives you, you know, that gives you the config tab here. Right, right. Uh, to be able to go into the and see the config item that you need to need to change. This was something that we hit on last multi-language project I did, but that was over a year ago, and a lot has changed since then. So I wasn't was sure. Was it Drupal eight or Drupal seven? It was Drupal eight, and we okay. couldn't do English interfaces everywhere for admin. It was just like it didn't work. So John figured it out. Fixed. I ran into the same issue, and I went to John, and he had a patch that didn't Fantastic. Yeah, there were a couple of patches out there. I, I did, I did uh, uh, add patches and clear caches. Hi, I'm, um, I'm in government. We have huge websites and um, often... Um, I know a couple not, of people in government. Not a lot, in state government, and not a lot of um, uh, budget. Sure. And, um, and often for translated pages, you have to prioritize. Mm -hmm. We use seven, and I've tinkered around with it some, and I noticed that um, it's been a while, so if I don't get this quite right, um, sure. correct me. But um, if you have um, a section where maybe half of the pages are translated, you might be presented with a menu with, um, if you're in the translated section, in this case Spanish, um, and then um, the pages that are in English are still presented. Yes. Um, so you would navigate the site, mm -hmm. and wherever you chose a menu item um, that was translated, you would get that. Mm -hmm. But if the menu item uh, was not translated, you would get the English version. Is that how the eight behavior is? Uh, yes, I believe it is. What happens okay. is it basically will show you whatever version that it has. Okay. So if it has an English version, you can say, yes, show the English version on this. Um, <clears throat> and you know when it gets translated, it'll show the translated version. So if I wanted to have an espanol.something.gov, um, it wouldn't really be all in Spanish if I didn't translate it all. So that's what I'm struggling yep. with. I don't know what the, so, the ideal user behavior is, but it, it um, I would have I would sort of like to have the subset of pages that we think are most pertinent to that sure. audience and just publish those. <laughs> we actually just had that conversation before coming in here. Um, one of our clients is having the same struggle. And uh, my, my take on it was if I was um, you know, a Spanish speaker and I came to a site and you offered Spanish and only half the content were in Spanish, I'd be a little bit disappointed. Okay. okay. Um, but I will say uh, in your use case, you can... I don't know if you noticed this, but when I hit the translate button in Drupal core, it actually pulled over the English content. So okay. if I were to just save that because I didn't have a translation at that point, the English content would be on the Spanish page. So it would end up showing, showing to the end user as uh, it would say Spanish, but it would actually actually be in English. So that okay. could, be a, could be a workaround. So you could have the separate full site. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much. Yep. Yeah. So th as I said, with the blocks, you can actually have a block per per language. You can ha you have visibility settings for blocks based on languages. So if you said, "Hey, I'm going to create a menu for Spanish. I'm going to create a menu for French. I'm going to create a menu for German," you could, based on the language of the site, display those blocks. So mine was around like validation. Do you have like validators, and might be specific to the translation provider, where the 
translation comes back, now we want to send it to our in-country SMEs yep. and say, verify that it's okay. Yep. They make changes. Mm -hmm. We want that change to go back to the translation provider. We want them to update so, their memory, yep. <laughs> et cetera. Yep. And, then, and then the final piece of it is that when it gets retranslated, we'd like the validator to know what came from memory yep. versus what came from the translation uh, service. Yep, yep, okay. I am totally following you. So um, I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go on a, a, little, bit of a little bit of a rant here. So what happens with, uh, with the translation is you send it up to Lingotech, right? And Lingotech has its own workflow, and that workflow can be configured however you want. So um, typically the way we've used it is it will um, we'll upload content to Lingotech. It'll pull terms out of our translation vault, which is all the terms that have already been translated, apply those, go into machine translation, translate the content, and then it'll go to a translator, um, whether it's our translator or Lingotech's translator, that can be determined. Uh, and then once that translator is done with it, it goes into a review phase where uh, an in-country person can review it, say, oh, no, you got this context a little bit wrong, uh, you want to change tense there, so on and so forth. And then at that point, it goes on to the next phase, and that could be the completion phase where it's like, yes, this is all set, mm -hmm. and we're going to download it back to Drupal. So once it goes up to Lingotech, you have a whole, whole suite of, um, of tools to be able to build your own custom workflows and have your translation vault because one of the, one of the, the big things with translation is, right, you're paying per word. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're translating the same word over and over again, it's like throwing money away. Uh, so Lingotech has the translation vault where all of the terms you already translated go in there. And it's like a little, a little uh, piggy bank basically that you can pull the terms out of, add them to your content. You don't have to pay for those terms. So it's, it's, saving, you, it's saving you money. Right. Um, and then with the combination of workflows, you can build it however you want. You want six people to review it before it comes back mm -hmm. down to your site, you can do that. Right. And all those updates from the reviewer flows back into the vault. But yeah, don't you have so, two vaults? So you just no, described no, no, you no, have no. a vault and you have a vault? No, no, no. Let me clarify. The vault is in Lingotech. Lingotech oh, okay. is storing that vault. Drupal does not have a translation vault. Okay. Um, Drupal, um, I'm going to say it's basic, but uh, it's not a negative, right? So Drupal is very much doing like a one-to-one. -one. You go in, you say translate this to this, and it, says, yeah, it saves it in the base. database. It doesn't segment it down. Exactly. Um, yeah. The vault functionality is coming from Lingotech, so okay. you definitely, if you're using that service, you'll get that functionality. Okay. All right. Cool. Any other questions? Over here. Yes. Can you add translations to the vault if you already translated content? So for the recording, the, tr the question is, can you add translations to the vault? The answer is yes. Um, Lingotech will allow you to translate uh, quite a few different file types into your vault. So if you had a CSV of, of terms already translated, um, or you were coming from another provider and they gave you uh, a file with your translations, you can import that into your vault uh, and um, use that as kind of a base for translations going forward. Any other questions? I think, is there one over here? No? Everybody's good? All right, well, I appreciate everybody's time. If you have more questions, uh, feel free to come on up and ask me. If you see me in the hall, feel free to stop me. Uh, we're hiring at Umfink, so if you want to come work with us, uh, feel free to uh, reach out. Some of my colleagues are in the audience. And uh, have a great DrupalCon.